I just want to start the video by saying I have merch and I never really talk about my merch but I'd appreciate it if you wanted to buy a t-shirt I have a ton of different designs and there's a limited time sorry Jerry t-shirt that I think just looks great the artist did a fantastic job with it and it's funny and if you don't get the joke then you didn't watch the video so go and watch the video so that you get the joke and then maybe you'll want to buy the t-shirt and it helps support the channel thank you bye or not buy, buy. <laughs> I am so excited. I haven't made one of these in months. If you haven't seen one before, it's where I dive into the eShop and find 10 amazing games and then compile them all into one big mega review for you to watch. It saves you having to dive in yourself and sift through all the crap that gets released every day. It also helps you not miss the games that released three weeks ago that are actually pretty good, but they got buried by a bunch of shovelware and weird mobile games. <laughs> I've done 20 something of these videos now, I can never remember, but with 10 games in each one, we have reviewed over 200 games in this series alone on the channel. And I'm very excited to add another 10 games today. Because it's been so long since I've done one, I actually had a lot of games to choose from. And I feel really good about every single game on this list. And I hope you find something or multiple somethings that you'll wanna go and play after the video. Yeah. You just wanna see some games, right? So let's get started, like the video, subscribe, Subscribe if you're new and uh, just have a good time. Um, I'm annoyed. In fact, I'm a little bit upset that nobody seems to be talking about Littlewood. And I don't mean me covered in tattoos on my second channel. That's Littlewood. We don't talk about him anymore. I mean Littlewood, which isn't like a little version of me or Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> no, Littlewood, the game, obviously. It's an adorably relaxing RPG that mixes elements of Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing into something a lot more streamlined. Your story begins at the end of the story, where the main protagonist has just saved the world from an unspeakable evil. Uh, not that they can remember any of it due to their amnesia, but now it's your job to care for and rebuild the town of Littlewood. You'll meet other townsfolk along the way, and you can attempt to convince them into staying in your town. The more people you meet and the deeper the relationships you build, maybe you can unlock some of those forgotten memories of the past. You can explore enchanted forests, fishing towns, mining caves, harvesting materials by chopping wood, mining ores, catching bugs, fishing, building structures like taverns or a lumber mill, completing quests, taking town folk requests to unlock new relationship paths. It's all here! even skill levels and date nights. Other than the quirky characters, charming story, addictive gameplay loop, and how much time I spend fishing, the thing that really stands out in Littlewood for me is the town management. You can build it however you want, but the villagers will have their own requests and ideal living situations. Like one might want to live next to his friend, but the friend might want to live next to the coffee shop. Relatable. So then it becomes a puzzle game in itself, trying to figure out the best way to piece everything together in your town and keep everyone happy. Oh, and when I said the game is streamlined, I really mean that. You can move and change anything you want, whenever, just by entering the creator mode. No forking out thousands of bells to a stupid raccoon and then having to wait a day for him to get off his butt and actually do something before you can do the next thing. You just and you're done. Also, if you want to cut down a tree, go fishing, or mine some ore, just walk up to any of that and press one simple button and the game will know exactly what you're trying to do without you having to go through a clunky inventory system making sure you have the right tool for the job. It's how easy it is to play this game that makes it so hard to stop playing this game. I know you're, you're watching a video right now and I, I really appreciate it, but I, I need to show you this. I got a brand new microphone and it sounds amazing. Trust me, plug in your Raycons right now and listen to the sound coming from... You, you don't have Raycons? <laughs> Well, it's your lucky day. <laughs> Raycon is upsetting the electronics industry big time by offering these premium wireless earbuds for half the price without compromising audio quality. I use mine in my home gym or when I'm riding my bike, which I finally got to do yesterday. Now the sun is actually out. That winter felt like it took forever. They fit so snug and comfortably that no amount of jostling or bumps are gonna knock them out. Plus, they come in a wide range of fun colors and patterns of variety of fit options and wires. 
I don't think so. What is this, 2006? Best of all, Raycon has a 45 day free return policy. And grabbing your own pair really does help support the channel and the videos like the one you're watching right now. So uh, if you could, please click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash beat em ups to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thank you Raycon for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to it. My channel name is Beat em Ups, right? Well, uh, not so fun, actually so boring, I might need to go pee due to boredom fact. I don't really like beat-em-ups that much. It's a long story, don't ask. But Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game, has always been the exception to that rule, as this is, in my opinion, the greatest beat-em-up of all time. So imagine my disappointment, waking up one morning and finding that it's V gone from the Xbox Live Online Marketplace and I couldn't play it anymore. But all these years later, thankfully, the Nintendo Switch and other places saved this game and re-released it. And I have to say, I'm in lesbian love. I'm in love once again. To start, visually, the game is a masterpiece with a beautifully animated and vibrant pixel art style that represents the original graphic novel art style perfectly. Cute characters and wonderful world design. It's fantastic. Next, the music. Oh my lord, it's like the best part. Scott Pilgrim is synonymous with its music, so of course the game is pumped full of incredible pop rock chiptune beats composed by the band Anamanaguchi. The entire soundtrack is just perfect. Catch It'll get stuck in your head for weeks and it even topped billboard charts after it released as for the gameplay on the surface It appears as a standard punch-and-kick beat-em-up, but it has so many extra layers the further into the game you play Around the levels you can enter storefronts and purchase food or items These can heal you or be equipped to you boosting your attack and defense stats adding an RPG-esque element into the mix Which is crucial as the difficulty level ramps up quick becoming almost insufferable early on unless you really Really utilize all the upgrades available to you. So make sure to get collected all those coins the enemy spit out once they explode. Cause uh, you're gonna need them if you plan on making it to each one of the evil ex-boyfriend boss battles. Just uh, don't go spending too many coins buying up all the bread. Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? Look, I don't got all day, right? We all have places to be, we all have loved ones to hang out with, and if you don't, then... We don't have all day. And I got a lot to say about a lot of the games on the list, so I'm gonna keep Doom Eternal pretty short. I mean, you know what it is. You know it's good. I still don't know how they crammed either of these Doom games onto the console. With how fast-paced and furious they are, you would think the Switch would just implode and then explode in that order if you even put a Doom disc near it. But nah, it, uh, it plays great. With little to no compromising other than some lower frame rates and blurrier visuals. It's actually kind of funny that Doom Eternal even qualifies for this video, because my own little personal rule is that these games have to be digital only with no physical release and while the first Doom got a physical release I guess Bethesda decided it wasn't worth doing this time around which is a shame because the game is really fun <laughs> oh well who cares next two years ago I made an awful video please don't go watch it it was bad hey <laughs> But it was about upcoming indie games that I was really excited for that were coming to the Switch. And one of those games was Monster Sanctuary. That day has finally come and I get to review it now. It's like full circle. I also played it on Twitch, so you might have already seen me play it. Monster Sanctuary is what would happen if you put Pokemon and Metroid into a room and just shoved a ton of wheat down their throats. Sorry, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. It's a wonderful mix of both. You start the game by picking your familiar, and I don't know how you're supposed to choose between all these good boys, but once you're done disappointing three of them, you can begin your adventure. You embark on your epic quest, using the powers of the monsters you collect along the way, unlocking an ever-expanding Metroidvania-inspired world. Not only do the monsters aid you in battle, but they also expand your reach within the world, cutting down vines, smashing walls, or gliding over gaps depending on your creature's unique ability. Each monster also has their own unique skill tree, and you can even equip them with items for some reason. You can give a bird a sword. I don't know why, but you can. So there's a lot of customization here with your team. What I love is that the turn-based 3v3 battles are activated in real time in the game world and at the end of each battle there's a chance the enemy will drop an egg that you can hatch and of course add it to your team but there's also a chance that that monster will be rare. You know, like Pokemon. You're gonna hate me. Maybe. I don't know. Among Us? Eh? That's how long it's been since I made one of these. I need to have Among Us in my series of eShop games worth buying because 
It is. You too, for the low, low price of $5, can destroy your closest friendships. Even though the online fad of every streamer and content creator ever milking that game for all it's worth has seemingly finally come to an end. That doesn't mean the game isn't still a ton of fun to play with friends during weekend game nights. It even has crossplay between everything, even mobile. So there really isn't any excuse for everyone not to play. And yes, that even includes the weird girl quietly lurking in the corner that your friend Steve brought to the party. Stop being antisocial and come get murdered, Suzanne. If you still haven't given this game a shot because you hate things that are mainstream, it is actually really good, I promise. The psychology between trying to figure out which one of your friends is lying or trying to convince them that you yourself aren't lying is the best part. That's why the visuals and the gameplay doesn't really matter at all. The actual game part of Among Us itself is just a means to an end. It's just the tool that you are using to enjoy the real game. The real game being the lies. Oh, unless you have no friends. I mean, because playing online with randos that don't have voice chat just sucks big time. So Ghost Runner is a cyberpunk... Sorry, I just got a shiver down my spine. Ghost Runner is a cyberpunk action game, similar to Mirror's Edge, where you traverse dangerous environments by dashing, jumping, wall running, and grappling. You also have enemies to deal with, but you gotta be careful because both you and them get killed in one hit, which is fantastic when you're on a great flow, ripping through the levels, dicing up bad guys with your super sharp katana, and even using Max Payne's slow down time ability to dodge and deflect bullets in midair. It's all one incredible feeling until you you stub your toe on that one lone bad guy and then you gotta try again. Thankfully, the reload time is super quick, so you will never be waiting long before trying a new approach. But, um... There's a couple of hangups here. This doesn't happen often in these videos because these videos are supposed to be eShop games worth buying. And Ghost Runner is but you're better off buying it anywhere else. PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Stadia, if it's even on Stadia, you name it, you're better off buying it anywhere else. The visuals on Switch were downgraded so much, and I mean so much, that it barely even looks like the same game in places. It probably could have used like a Borderlands style cell shaded filter thrown over everything to hide its extreme ugliness. Yeah, as such, it actually makes it super hard to see enemies at times. It's hard to see their attacks and movements, which can lead to very frustrating deaths that feel out of your control. Also, it's a fast-paced and furious game that deserves to be played above the Switch's locked 30 FPS. If you have no other way to play this game, then the Switch port will get the job done, and it's a ton of fun. Just make sure that this version is a last resort to play an otherwise brilliantly fun game. You know, what I love most about making these videos is stumbling upon a true hidden gem of a game. A game that flies quietly under the radar. It's easy to miss. And even if you do see it at first glance, it might not be what you think it is. And lo-fi ping pong is one of those games. It's an aesthetically pleasing rhythm game where every ping and pong is timed with the equally pleasing it's raining outside my window and my cat sleeping next to me while I study on my laptop lo-fi vibe style beats. With that premise in place, it once again might be easy to assume that lo-fi ping pong would be a chill few minutes of gameplay without much more to offer. And once again, you'd be mistaken. The gameplay is actually brutally difficult as there's almost no indication of when you need to ping that next pong other than the beat of the music, and the window to pong that ping is pretty tight. This forces you to fully feel the music, to become one with the lo-fi. Then once you find your groove, it'll just be you, the music, ping pong, and ping pong. Yeah, I said ping pong twice because the main character's name is also ping pong. Ping pong. <laughs> I'm getting sick of saying that. Has a somewhat dark and sad story that's told throughout the game, which is another pleasant surprise I did not expect from this one. Really surprising considering it's only $5. When I started my experience with Roki, I wasn't really sure what to expect. It's a heavily story-driven adventure with a point-and-click style of gameplay that never really felt like a traditional point-and-click, other than the few times I did get pretty stumped on the odd puzzle or two. Roki will take you on a journey, exploring a living fairy tale 
tale, meeting both friendly and not so friendly monsters, solving riddles, and discovering the secrets of the world and its characters' past lives. I adore the art style. The cell shaded visuals and lighting effects to its character design and animations, everything was so charming and yet creepy. The story begins with Tove and her little brother Lars. After a great creature destroys their home, they are left out in the cold before Lars goes missing and it's up to his big sister to find him. Seeking out four powerful guardians for help and guidance whether they want to help you or not is something you may need to convince them of. The forest is full of magic and mystery, with many items scattered around that can help aid you in progressing through the next area or help another creature with their problems that in turn may help you with yours. Roku is a decent length story at about 8 hours long, but it was one that I didn't want to put down until I'd unlocked all the secrets and solved every puzzle. It had a surprise around every corner and I just, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I do love point and clicks in general, I'm a sucker for them, but I really like this one. Cyber Shadow can be considered in many ways a spiritual successor to old school NES Ninja Gaiden. And if right now you're having a stroke because you could swear you've heard me say that before, I have about The Messenger, which was another game that was inspired by old school Ninja Gaiden. But both of these games took very different approaches to their style and gameplay experiences. Cyber Shadow starts you as a somewhat traditional ninja Ninja Warrior waking up in a futuristic cyberpunk world. Sorry, that keeps happening today. I don't. Where was I? In a futuristic cyberpunk world. As you play, you'll unlock more and more abilities that stack effects on top of themselves, and by endgame, you should have enough cybernetic advancements and upgrades to bring down a world overrun by synthetic life forms, which is good, because that's what you're supposed to do. In traditional old school fashion, the levels can be quite difficult, relying on trial and error, learning enemy attack patterns, and you know getting good. But it's not a stupidly hard challenge that will have you pulling your hair out from the stress cuphead style, but rather a nice challenging challenge. Where the game design is always adding in a fresh twist on previous levels to keep it feeling fast paced and intense. If you like Ninja Gaiden, you'll probably like this. If you liked The Messenger, you'll probably like this. If you like good games, you get it. Saving the best to last, maybe. Saving the most Zelda-like to last. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Blue Fire is all about fast, fluid, and fun movement that is tight and responsive. You can tell that that was their main focus for this title, and they nailed it. You got wall running, double jumping, mid-air dashing, sword slashing chaos, where one minute you'll be marathon flipping and gliding around levels, and the next you'll be mid-giant boss fight trying to time your dodges and attacks. Visually, there's something very Zelda. Zelda, Wind Wakey, but gone dark side about this one. From the Shadow Link-esque hero to the cartoony cel-shaded world building and enemies. Unlike Wind Waker, clearly this game is a fast-paced 3D platformer. But again, like Wind Waker, we also have an open-ish world, but yeah, yeah, no, dungeons. We got, we got dungeons to explore. There are two big challenges to face in Blue Fire. The first is not slipping and dying while throwing your body at platforms like they owe you money. And the second is how squishy you are during the combat. You can only take a couple hits before it's game over, so it really comes down to you using the environment and abilities to your advantage in every single battle. It's a really rewarding sense of progression as you play and upgrade your abilities, like the amount of time you can spend in the air, attacking and dashing. Areas that would be tricky to traverse early game, I'd find myself flying over them by the end of the game. Zelda and Dark Souls, you know, the two games that 80% of games seem to get compared to these days. But in the case of Blue Fire, it really is like Zelda and Dark Souls and had a baby with a little bit of Mario mixed in. And if you ask me, that's a fun three-way. Oh, we did it! It takes so long. Yeah, I'm gonna buy all the games, play all the games, review all the games, then stand here, and then I finally get through it. When I get that last one, it feels great. Hope you guys found something you might want to buy, play, something that interests you, whether it's Littlewood to Blue Fire. As I said, there's a little something for everyone in all of these videos. You can go back through and watch all the other ones. There's like over 200 games. If you don't find something that you want to play, you're being picky. You're, be you're being unreasonable, even. <laughs> so be reasonable and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe check out the merch if you wanna. But also check out the sponsor of the video. Links down below. And that is everything. Have a great whatever today is. Bye.